as of 2019, the average age of the first-time car buyer is 26 years old. You can run for Congress before the typical person finances their first vehicle. Hmm. Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Tamir and after seven years of selling and financing vehicles, I have seen many first-time buyers fall flat on their face. But more importantly, Experienced car purchasers practice and teach some of the best buying behaviors in the business, such as leaving a decision maker at home, forgetting your driver's license, keeping your options open. Yeah, I'm interested in looking at some cars. I wanted to check out your pickup trucks, your convertibles, your SUVs. Um, can I look at your electric vehicles too? Allocating 10 minutes or less for a dealership visit, forgetting the trade-in, asking for a best price a month or more in advance, and so on and so forth. You may actually be ready to run for Congress if you do practice these. But unfortunately, we have failed to teach these best buying behaviors to our millennial and Generation Z prospective car buyers. What a shame. If you couldn't tell, I was being a little bit facetious because these practices actually make purchasing a vehicle much more cumbersome and difficult. But it's crucial that these practices be brought to light because many trainers and car business insiders instill the fear of the car dealership in the public and they've been doing so for decades. They teach it to you as a method to protect yourself from the car dealership but in reality, it prolongs your process and it doesn't allow you to get the information that you need to make a decision. This especially hurts first-time car buyers because they're going to end up getting frustrated when they go to dealerships, try and purchase a vehicle using these practices, and the dealerships end up not working with them. So in this video, I'm going to tell you everything you must bring to the dealership whenever you make a visit, even if you don't plan on buying a car that day. I'm also going to cover the parameters of the first-time car purchase program so that way you know what kind of car to look for and how to budget for it. Which by the way, if you haven't seen my budgeting video, stop this video, watch that first, and come back to this one. This video is intended for first-time car buyers, but experienced car buyers, you can find something useful in this video too for when you make your next purchase or are involved in another purchase. Without further ado, let's begin. First, you must bring all decision makers for the transaction. That means everybody that has a vested interest in the transaction, whether it's a co-signer, a spouse, a family member of some kind, a business owner on business transactions, and so on and so forth. Having everybody together is far more efficient than countless phone calls, text messages, video chats, Snapchats, you name it. Next, you must allow ample time to visit the dealership. The average transaction time in the United States to purchase a vehicle is two and a half hours. That two and a half hours is because you need to select a vehicle, you need to examine the vehicle by walking around it, test drive the vehicle, take a look at financial proposals, get the deal financed, as well as do your licensing paperwork. Next, you must bring your United States government issued driver's license. Not a learner's permit, not a scheduled test, but a fully-fledged United States government-issued driver's license. You have no idea how much this is forgotten. Make sure that you have an insurance quote prepared before you visit the dealership. Typically for first-time car buyers, your insurance rates are going to be much higher than you experienced car buyers. If you are an experienced car buyer, please bring your current insurance card. It is forgotten a lot. Next, please bring your checkbook cash or credit card for your down payment. And yes, you will need a down payment if you're a first time car buyer. Yes, I know you're just looking or I know you're not buying a car today, but bring it anyway just in case you find an opportunity that is way too good to pass up. There's quite a few of them out there. You need to bring a proof of residency to the car dealership. That's a utilities bill, a phone bill, a cable bill, voter registration, hunting or fishing license, anything that ties you with the address that the car is going to be garaged at or kept at. You also need to bring proof of income. That's your most recent pay stubs. Be sure you bring two to three months worth or your six most recent pay stubs just to be safe. Finally, you will need to provide references on a first time car deal. That's the names, the phone numbers, and the cities of people that can verify that you are who you are. Depending on your credit, with excellent credit, you may just need to provide two, 
If your credit is not so great, you may need to provide up to six. Now that we've established everything you must bring to the car dealership to obtain financing for a vehicle, we're going to go over the criteria of the first-time car buyer programs. This program, as well as any financing program for that matter, has three criteria that must be met. The vehicle has to be the right one, the customer has to be the right one, and the deal structure has to be the right one. You can sometimes obtain financing when only two out of three of these criteria are met, but three is always a safer bet. The buyer in this case is going to be the most difficult criteria to meet because they've never financed a vehicle before. Ways to make a first time buyer more qualified are to establish trade lines such as credit cards or mortgages, and another way is to have an excellent payment history for a long period of time. Another way is to have a cosigner with long established and strong credit history, such as an older family member or spouse. The bank will look at the vehicle that the first time car buyer wants to purchase. The vehicle must be five years old or newer or under 75,000 miles for the bank's consideration. Also, some banks do prefer that the vehicle has some warranty coverage remaining or some additional warranty coverage purchased, which that will go over a little bit more in another video. Finally, the bank will look at the structure of the loan. The total amount financed typically cannot exceed $15,000 after the car, tax, title, and license and registration fees. The loan length also must typically be under 60 months or under 5 years, although some banks will allow you to go up to 72 months or 6 years, assuming the vehicle is newer and assuming that you have great credit. The important kicker is that most banks for a first-time car buyer will not exceed 80% loan to value. That means they will only finance up to 80% of the book value of the vehicle and the rest you have to pay for in the form of a down payment, which is why I said you need a down payment for your first-time car purchase. Let's take a look at an example. Let's say a first-time car buyer finds a car that they're interested in purchasing. The vehicle is three years old, has 40,000 miles on it, and it's selling for $12,000 before tax, title, and license. After Washington State tax, title, and license, the out-the-door price is going to be $13,925, or rounded up, $14,000. The book value on this particular car is $13,000, so paying $12,000 is a thousand back of book, meaning this is a good deal for any buyer. 80% of loan to value in this case is $10,400, meaning that that's what the bank is going to loan to our first time buyer. All said and done, that means the buyer needs to come up with approximately $3,600 for a down payment to purchase this vehicle. And that's how you finance your first car. Do you remember your first car purchase experience? What was it like? And what are your best buying behaviors? Feel free to do your part, leave a comment below, or subscribe for more automotive content. My name is Tamir, and until next time...